All right, hey man, I'm here for the race and like. Oh, hey man, what's going on? How you been? Here for the race too? Troy, this is a desk chair and it's a broken desk chair at a race. What are you doing? There are no rules on what we use to race on. And plus, this chair has been passed down in my family through its generations. My father won on this chair. Whatever, five dollars is five dollars, let's get to racing. All right, three, two, one, go! Troy, freaking serious, come on, this is a race. You haven't seen anything yet, Turbo Boost! Troy, come on, that's not much faster. I'm still gonna win. Time to pull out all the stops then. 360 Ultra Boost! Troy, come on, that's not gonna do much. It... Troy? T Troy? When you think of Sonic Racing games, maybe your mind goes to this, or this? No, not this, never this. But to me, the game that comes to mind will always be Sonic R. Oh, Sonic R, what an interesting life you've had. What was originally probably just a stand-in for a real Sonic game that the Saturn desperately needed became something that people just kind of point and laugh at? Seriously, watch a video on Sonic R and it'll be 90% making fun of the game. I think it turned a lot of people away from even trying the game, me though? Nah, I wasn't even aware of these things. I found out about Sonic R because of this thing, the Tails doll. Back in the late 2000s, the internet was all over this thing, claiming it was the scariest thing next to Cuddy Boy and Mr. Bleedlemouse himself, Sonic.exe. And you know, I was a smart kid, I didn't fall for any obviously fake stuff. So of course, I completely believed the Tails doll was real, and then decided the best thing to do to quell that fear was to buy the very thing that would cause the curse to begin with. That was brilliant. And side note, how did anyone ever come up with the idea of this thing being scary? I mean, look at this victory animation. That stuff's just cute as heck. Anyways, yeah, I bought Sonic R for a possessed doll and, uh, well, I might have liked it more than most people, let's just say that. Like, don't get me wrong, Sonic R is a bad game with a number of problems, ranging from horrible tank controls to the lack of modes and things to do, to the whole five tracks. But you know what? There's just so many of these little things that make it so, I don't know, charming? It has all these little things about it that are either just really neat, or things that were at least conceptually cool. It's just that the game barely does anything with these things, as you'll soon find out. But first, let's talk about those charming things, because really, when else am I going to have an opportunity to talk about this game? So first, I think I should mention that I really like the way the game looks. Its style is simplistic, no doubt, with very simple character models and tracks devoid of any NPCs or anything to liven things up, but I'd argue that's kind of part of the point. Like, take Radical City, for example. Sure, there's no NPCs, but considering the amount of flooded streets and what looks like decaying buildings, that kind of gives this place this neat atmosphere. The place seems abandoned and empty, and like it's slowly falling apart. It's a bit melancholic. Really, the whole aesthetic of this place is very vaporwave-y. And like, several areas of the game feel like this. Reactive Factory, Radical City, and Regal Ruins. Seriously, look at these places. Get some weirdly stretched text, add a VHS filter, distort the music a bit, and tell me this doesn't reek of the whole vaporwave aesthetic. And you know, speaking of music, who boy, everyone used to complain about this soundtrack, saying that these weird vocal tracks don't really fit the game. And I mean, have you looked at the game? It's already weird, so the music only enhances the experience. Plus, have you heard the music? It's straight up a bunch of bangers! Funny story, I was so sad when they removed Super Sonic Racing from Smash 4 after it had been in Brawl, and when I found out that it made it back in Smash Ultimate, I actually screamed? Yeah, everyone else was screaming about all the veterans returning, and I was screaming about a music track. And you know what, despite the kind of bad controls, I honestly have a lot of fun playing the game. Besides Regal Ruins, which is just an absolute train wreck design-wise, all of the tracks are for the most part really fun to play. Like, the design isn't bad, and there's all these little secrets you can find. Coins for unlocking characters, chaos emeralds hidden behind certain doors. Like, it's really neat that they structured this game with all these little secrets in mind. And in multiplayer, the game can be genuinely really fun. They have all these extra shortcuts and secret areas you can go through to get a leg up. 
but it's also very easy to mess up and hit a wall or something, adding a degree of risk to using the secret areas. And all the different characters with their different special abilities assure that the races always remain exciting. But actually, those different playable characters are actually rather important, and no, not just because I'm obsessed with the Tails doll. No, it relates to what I mentioned earlier, a cool concept that they basically go nowhere with. While initially these characters with their unique playstyles may seem like a cool thing, something to add variety to a game sorely lacking in length, and I mean, yeah, that's true, but my problem is that they could be used for so much more than this. This could have been something to truly set Sonic R apart from the other racing games at the time, and instead it just kinda goes nowhere with it. Here, let's dig a little deeper to explain exactly what I'm talking about. So if you didn't know, each of the playable characters in Sonic R has some kind of special ability that sets them apart from the others. Sonic, as you'd expect, is the fastest of the bunch, but has fairly poor handling and a lack of air abilities, with the exception of a double jump. Tails has similar handling to Sonic, and is a little slower, but makes up for it with the ability to fly horizontally straight for a bit. Knuckles has some of the best handling in a glide move at the cost of a bit of speed. Amy's in a car and it can't jump, but it can do this little turbo boost that lasts for like a couple seconds and that's it. And into the garbage she goes! Metal Sonic and Metal Knuckles feature similar speeds and abilities to Sonic and Knuckles, only with the ability to run on water for a couple of seconds. And if you just keep jumping, you'll never fall in, and I'm really not sure if this is an exploit, so... Egg Robo and Eggman can shoot little missiles that slow down other characters, but it basically does nothing. Say hi to Amy in the trash for me, and Tails Dog can completely float on any terrain with no effect, whether it be land or water. And uh, that's it. Not exactly a huge roster, but the important part here isn't the quantity, it's the quality. Look at it this way, Mario Kart usually has a ton of characters from across the Mushroom Kingdom, and yet there's really not much of a difference between any of them. A bit of a weight difference, different speeds and acceleration, really it's all minor stuff. Like there's not really a difference between picking Mario and Luigi, they're practically the same. Except the fact that Luigi is cool as frick. Sonic R, however, makes every character unique. There's a pretty major difference in picking Sonic or Tails. Each one has strengths and weaknesses over the other, and abilities that change up how you traverse the track, meaning that the one you pick can completely change how you play the game. Choosing a character isn't just an aesthetic preference anymore, there's a tangible reason to pick different characters. And I mean, sure, it isn't balanced, like, at all, but the concept here is at least neat. It could have made for a really unique racer that completely escapes the Mario Kart clone title so often bestowed upon these types of games. Notice I said, could've, because as cool as this idea is in concept, the game really doesn't do that much with it, like at all. Besides a couple little chunks of water, the stages basically don't take advantage of these abilities at all. Tails Flight, Knuckles Glide, Eggman's Missiles, Tails Doll's Terrain Negation, basically none of these are used to their fullest. Sure, they can make certain things easier, but that's really it. Every part of a stage is designed to be reachable by every character, meaning that these special abilities not only feel like they aren't being used for unique situations, but it also greatly imbalances the game. Some characters are straight up just worse than others because their own abilities aren't as good. Why use Eggman with his missiles when Tails has more maneuverability and can dodge hazards easier? Why use Sonic when Metal Sonic has advantages that Sonic doesn't have? And the funny thing is that this was an easy problem to solve, and solving said problem would vastly improve the game as a whole. So think about it like this. What if every stage had certain areas built specifically to be traversed with certain abilities? Imagine there was an upper path that required Tails or Knuckles flight abilities to traverse. Or how about a wall that only Eggman's missiles can break? Maybe Sonic can't go into these areas, but the main path has much more straight paths, allowing for his speed to really shine there. How about more areas focused on terrain that slow characters down so that Tails Doll has an advantage there? Like, these are pretty simple ideas, and not only would they add much more value to the character's abilities while balancing the game better, but it would also make the tracks feel, well, cooler. It'd make the tracks feel so much more varied and dynamic. It'd feel even more like the character choice adds variability instead of just meaning you have a better character so you just win. Alas, that's not what we got. And man, that's the worst thing. There are cool concepts here, but man, the game just does nothing with them. I imagine it was probably because the game was rushed. I mean, one look at the stage selection will tell you all you need to know. They definitely rushed this out. And yeah, the game also isn't that great, but uh, that's not as important as the stage thing. They could have done all of this, implemented these more complex stages and made a super neat racing game, but they rushed it instead to release it so we kind of just have the outline of a good idea placed on top of a really lackluster racing game. Now a sequel could definitely take these ideas and use them better, but <sighs> yeah, like they're ever gonna do that. 
they seem fine with the current racing games they're making, which don't get me wrong, are good in their own right. But man, it sucks that these ideals will just never go anywhere. And heck, they don't even really reference the game, like, at all. A couple remixes of the game's music, and not enough if I'm being honest, and uh, nope, that's really it. Heck, the Sonic R specific characters have basically never appeared again, which sucks for my boy especially. Come on, Sega, bring back the Tails doll. And give him a gun. But hey, I guess it's not all bad. I mean, clearly the game must have done something right, considering that I'm still thinking about it after all these years. Even if half of that is probably the music, let's be real. I'll continue to love it in an ironic way, but man is it hard not to think about what could have been. Or maybe I'm just obsessed with a game that realistically I shouldn't even care about, who knows.